Yeah, hello everyone. Thank you for coming to the talk. And uh, first, thanks Sven for inviting me to talk about B BVM. Uh, my name is Chen Chen Wang. Uh, it's a bit hard to pronounce. Uh, first, a bit short introduction about myself. Um, I, I'm Chinese. I came to uh, Sweden like about 10 years ago came to EPFL to do my PhD research. Uh, and in 2015, I proposed the first uh, linear time asynchronous Byzantine consensus, consensus algorithm. So back then, like Bitcoin kind of just, uh, like still only a, a few people heard about it. And the consensus was not even a buzzword. And I, I happened to work in the field <laughs> to do to, to, to the research. Um, but uh, in the past six years, I have been working on uh, RFU, a new blockchain that tried to scale Bitcoin based on uh, proof of work and the UTXO model, and also try to improve some of the, uh, the ESM technology like EVM, uh, like the account model. Uh, probably you have heard that there are a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of hackers that have been happened on the EVM platform. That's one of the, the big problems we want to resolve. We, we build a new virtual machine and also a new programming language for that. Um, I, I have been following the Bitcoin development for like uh, quite a while. I think the first time I heard about it, heard about it was in 2014 or 2016. 13, I don't remember exactly. Uh, my professor asked me something about Bitcoin, uh, and then I started to 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 read the paper. Um, but my I'm I'm more like a research and technical people, so my my interest is more about the technology of Bitcoin. Uh, especially since I work on RFU, we we built uh, our technology actually inherits a lot of the advantage of the, of the Bitcoin tech. So I have to read a lot about the source code of Bitcoin, uh, a lot of the specifications of, of BIPs. Uh, and also in general, I, I'm very interested in the uh, scalability solutions uh, for Bitcoin. Yeah, so to talk about Bitcoin v virtual machine, I'd like to first start with uh, a little bit uh, quick introduction about Bitcoin take. I'm not sure how many, uh, how technical uh, you guys are, but I try to present it in a very non-technical way. Uh, but I don't want to talk the non-technical part. I try to talk about the take in a non-technical way. So first, why Bitcoin take is great. Uh, in my personal opinion, I, I, I like these three features of Bitcoin take. The, the first thing is it enables the decentralized and permissionless uh, protocol with the uh, Bitcoin core cl uh, clients. Uh, by decentralized means you can run the, the, the clients in a very large scale peer-to-peer -peer network. And the permissionless it means anyone could join the network and uh, make a transaction with the, with the software. Um, and with this protocol, you can have a immutable ledger on, on, on it. So I think Bitcoin right now is the most immutable one. Uh, there's no hard fork happened in the history. Uh, strictly speaking, there are some hard forks, but, uh, uh, but you can say that it's, there's no hard fork. Um, and the, the second one from technical perspective or from the system, system design perspective, I think Bitcoin is, is great because it's simple. It's the, uh, is the simplest blockchain in the world because it only do transactions for for Bitcoin and it has uh, one megabyte block and you can uh, you can only have like one block every 10 minutes this make it really the simplest one and I think nowadays a lot of people you can write a simple client for it even though if you want to make it if you want to write a very secure uh, big, uh, big Bitcoin clients is is going to be very hard, but you can you can kind of implement a, a very naive one, like probably in, in one week you, you can build it. So that's basically to uh, 
uh, to describe you how, how simple actually the protocol is. Uh, and also it's very secure because it's simple and it's secure based on UTX model. It basically only do uh, transactions for the money. You cannot do uh, a lot of the very complicated stuff. That makes it really, uh, really uh, secure. You, for example, in the, I think in, in the history of Bitcoin, you, you never have someone lost Bitcoin on chain. The only way to lose your Bitcoin is that you, 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 you lost your private key or you lost your wallet. Uh, and lastly, it's battle tested. This one is very important. You know, even though we always say that Bitcoin is a money based on mathematics, right? But in fact, it's also a very complicated system. And as we all know that, uh, no matter how hard you try, you, you're like a software system, usually they have, they could be, they could exist the bugs, right? Like, like Linux system, you can, sometimes you still have, have to upgrade it because there are some exploits or some vulnerabilities. Uh, so it's the same for Bitcoin. Bitcoin has, has existed for more than 10 years. Uh, it has been really tested and improved by many, many hackers in the world, right? And this makes it really one of the most tasty the <coughs> blockchain. If you think about the other blockchains, for example, Ethereum, for example, uh, the other ones, uh, because I have read a lot of the source code of these projects, I, I can... Uh, I can really tell for sure that none of the blockchain has been tested as much as Bitcoin. Uh, for example, for Ether, they constantly introduce, sorry, oh, like they, every kind of, yeah, they, they embrace a lot of hard forks. So they uh, have to introduce new features to a blockchain. And, uh, uh, Usually for a lot of new features, I don't think they tested it as much uh, as, as, as we would hope for, for a decentralized uh, uh, a ledger platform. So uh, only Bitcoin that you, you test it to the degree that you can really say that it's probably the, uh, the most tasty software in the world, kind of. And this is very important, I think, for decentralized money. Uh, yeah, so basically for me, from a technical perspective, that's why I feel Bitcoin is really uh, very amazing. Uh, so uh, that's already a lot of the, the kind of the huge advantage of Bitcoin. Now let's talk about something else. Uh, so this is one of the, the main topics that people always bring up. Or what if I want to have some some dApps on Bitcoin. First, the question is, do we really want to have dApps on Bitcoin? Uh, this is a very controversial uh, topic. Uh, my personal perspective is that you don't really need to have a lot of dApps on Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is the digital money. You don't, you, <coughs> you don't need to have those, uh, for example, social network on, on, on Bitcoin or uh, some memo coin on Bitcoin. But it's, it's fun to have, but maybe not necessary for the long term. But still, there could be some interesting use cases. Uh, like, or you use the apps on Bitcoin. For example, if you can have uh, a stable coin, if you can have DEX on, on Bitcoin, um, that would be cool, at least uh, for me. So um, I think not, not just me, uh, at least a large portion of the Bitcoin community, they have been uh, working on this for, for many, many years. They have, I think they have proposed many solutions to, um, to this one. Um, <coughs> so the, the, the first question is, does Bitcoin support, uh, or can we build the apps on Bitcoin directly? So the answer is yes, you can build some the apps on, on Bitcoin. Uh, because Bitcoin have uh, also have a kind of like smart contract on it. It's called Bitcoin Script. You can use it to build a uh, single seek, seek transaction. You can use it to build a uh, multi seek transaction. You can use it to build a payment channel, for example, right? Uh, all of these things can be, you can see them as a kind of simple D apps. Uh, but on the other hand, 
it's not enough. It's not enough. So uh, I, I, I want to give a quick introduction to Bitcoin uh, script. What is it? So Bitcoin script is just uh, uh, a programming language, a very, very simple programming, programming language. It used to be more powerful in the initial version, but then Satoshi uh, think that it's kind of too flexible that it may introduce some attack vectors to the to the big Bitcoin software. So he uh, kind of deprec deprecated some of the opcode of the, the script, script language to make it really even simpler. Uh, so nowadays the Bitcoin script is, uh, you cannot really do too much with it. In most of the cases, uh, you, you use this to, to define some, uh, to introduce some conditions to spend the, the, uh, the, the UTXO in, in the Bitcoin system. So basically you, you have some coins in, uh, uh, in, in the Bitcoin blockchain and you put different kinds of locks or different kind of mathematic conditions uh, to protect your, 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 your coin and let you can spend it uh, if you manage to, to solve these uh, uh, conditions in the script. And, and as I said, that is what's designed on purpose to make it very simple and very secure. Uh, and it's actually achieved this goal, right? So Bitcoin scripts never have any on-chain hacks. Uh, you, you, can, you can, nowadays, you can use it to build the apps like, as I said, like multi-sig and uh, uh, one, of, one of the most complicated and the important one is, is called the Hash time lock contract is used a lot in the uh, payment channel used in the Lightning Network, etc. Uh, <clears throat> but you can that's that's what you can do so far. Uh, if you want to do more, then uh, sorry, uh, it's not welcome. <laughs> uh, but of course, the, there's no consensus consensus in the Bitcoin community that this kind of DApps is enough for the Bitcoin ecosystem. You know, so. A lot of people and developers, they try to kind of try to uh, extend the scope of the Bitcoin ecosystem uh, in with different kind of uh, hikers and the uh, uh, technology. Uh, yeah, so the, if we want to build a DEX on Bitcoin, the Bitcoin scripts is not enough. Uh, what should we do? First thing we need to extend or like kind of enlarge the capability of the Bitcoin script. Uh, as I said, that's initially was more flexible and, the, and Satoshi was not a, uh, kind of was not sure about the security, so he made it simpler. And then now we want to have more capability from the script language, so they have to to, to kind of add new features into it, right? Uh, so. It means we need to up upgrade Bitcoin somehow. But as you all know that uh, for Bitcoin, really it's, it's impossible to upgrade it. Uh, like hard fork is not really uh, welcome in the, in the community and in the ecosystem. So people have to do soft forking. It's, a, it's kind of a more hacky way to change the kind of, to, to add new new features into the ecosystem without breaking the uh, the consensus of Bitcoin. Uh, so I, I, I will talk a little bit about software forking just in case you don't know it. So software, software forking is a, a network uh, upgrade technology that uh, will keep backward compatible uh, with the with the existing network and uh, uh, but they introduce some new changes without hurting the consensus rule with some, some magic uh, and then try to get the support from the network and once a certain kind of a certain number of miners they agree with this new feature and then uh, you can uh, the whole network can activate the, the new feature uh, there are very there are two like very well known upgrades uh, were, have, have been done with soft forking the first one is SegWit uh, the second one is Taproot and Taproot is actually the upgrade enabled quite a lot of things. 
it's a uh, taproot is kind of uh, if if we don't dive into details it's basically they use a very uh, very uh, very efficient data structure is called Merkle tree to merge uh, a large set of spending conditions as I mentioned before that you can use a Bitcoin script to lock your UTXO and then later you can spend it uh, but if your logic if the logic of your uh, of your uh, of your lock is very complicated then Bitcoin script is limited and also it's gonna to and also you when the condition is more involved the you, you're gonna to need to have a, like a big script for that and that also is not efficient sometimes um, so taproot is kind of efficient way a very efficient way to to you you, you can set a large number of uh, conditions I'm not sure right now what's the upper bound of that probably 1 billion is is possible I'm not sure but just my guess so the the data structure is very efficient you can merge a lot of conditions together uh, and you you and on chain is actually you just need to give a, a hash to the to the to the Merkle tree so the address basically is kind of like the the uh, the the hash of the uh, the the root hash of the Merkle tree um, yeah it enables very flexible spending conditions you can you can have very smart locks and also you can use it to build more um, much more cheap transactions with this new feature and most importantly it, it enables BitVM uh, this is the thing we are going to talk about today uh, and BitVM can, can give you the capability of DEX in some way so yeah so <coughs> what, what, what is BM? Uh, what, what is BitVM? BitVM is basically try to try to run any any kind of applications or programs on Bitcoin you can you can see it in that way but as I say that's run and any are quotes first it's a uh, actually you cannot run it directly on the Bitcoin is that the execution is moved off chain so you don't need to actually to execute it uh, directly on the Bitcoin because because Bitcoin script is limited, right? You cannot actually execute it uh, on chain, or sometimes it's too expensive to execute it because the block is one megabyte uh, limited, uh, and sometimes the cost may be too high. But anyway, you you cannot directly execute the program on Bitcoin. So BVM, what BVM did is that they moved the execution off chain of the blockchain, uh, but they managed to find a smart way to verified execution on the blockchain it somehow is, is is kind of similar to the zkp stuff or you you heard on evm ecosystem so here is kind of the same philosophy uh, so uh yeah on the right side you can see the gra uh the picture that you have two basically two components one component is the bitcoin core is the bitcoin protocol and then you have the BitVM. BitVM is something uh, besides the blockchain to help you execute the, uh, the program, any program. But any also is kind of limited somehow uh, because, um, because you, have to, you have to proof it some way and uh, you can only run it with, uh, uh, between two parties. So it means uh, the computation the program is limited to kind of to to be verified between just two parties so that that's kind of limits its application um, that's a very high level introduction to the bitvm but uh, i want to go a little bit into the details um, so how bitvm actually 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 work the the first step suppose that you have a program you want to uh, you want to uh, to run it, kind of run it on Bitcoin, but you actually don't run it on Bitcoin. The first, the BitVM will kind of convert 
the the program or encode the program into uh, into something called uh, circuits. If you are if you know a little bit about computer science, you know that uh, this is actually the kind of the physical physical uh, stuff in your computer that's actually uh, 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 run your your software. But here is that. Uh, the BVM, they first encode the program into a binary circuit, and then they can, um, and then they can have some magic to deal with the, the the circuit. Basically, like here, I I will skip it, but you you can imagine that you have a program, and the program is uh, uh, just a sequence of uh, uh, circuits. Um, and then when you have a sequence of circuits. You can encode, uh, or you can uh, you can put them together uh, and form a, a taproot taproot tree. And here, a tree is a, uh, is a computer science data structure that um, I'm not sure how to uh, the best way to describe a tree for non-technical people. But a tree is basically. Uh, Uh, so technically, is uh, the Merkle tree is if you have a, a set of, for example, a set of a hundred, uh, a hundred, uh, a hundred, how to say, uh, a, mm, a hundred piece of data, and you want to, you want to uh, store store it. Uh, smartly, but you don't have enough space for it. So you 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 generate a proof for that, and whenever people ask you for some data, you can prove that you actually own it. So that's uh, that's the magic here. You you want to have a tree uh, because you let's say that if you have a dex, you encode it into for example one billion circuit. You cannot store it on Bitcoin, right? So you need to you need a way to store it smartly, and that's why you have this kind of tree structure. Uh, if you put all of the if you put all of the circuits into a tree, and uh, at its end you only at the end you only need to uh, to store the 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 root the root on the blockchain, and then later you can prove it some somehow. Uh, yeah, so for the proof part, you can, uh, it's kind of cryptogra cryptography stuff anyway. You can assume that you can always prove it with the, with the, 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 the root. Um, so for BitVM, you, you basically convert a program into circuits, and then you kind of compress the circuit into a hash. And this hash is just like uh, 32, 32 bytes. It's uh, like it's nothing on the blockchain. Uh, so that's the first magic. Uh, and then the second magic, uh, the, the next magic is you, you have this uh, very smart way to, a very smart way to encode the program. Uh, you store it, you kind of store it, you don't store it directly on the blockchain. But you need to prove to the to another person that you actually execute it following the the program. Uh, so it means that you have to provide the the uh, the value of this uh, this circuit, and then you show it to another person to say that okay, you see, I actually execute it in in this way, and then when the other uh, the other party see the all of the values. He can uh, verify it uh, directly, but that's not uh, efficient because, for example, as I said, that if you have one billion circuit, uh, you if you want to verify it on the blockchain, it's kind of uh, 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 impossible because Bitcoin is uh, uh, it's like one megabyte uh, uh, per block. So here you have to do it smartly. Uh, the way they do it is they, 
uh, have a, this kind of challenge and response game, you can, you can do it and you can apply binary search uh, for the sequence. So that means uh, when you verify it, um, you don't need to go, go through it one by one. You can use binary search. It's a, it's a very common uh, computer science trick. You, you basically you divide and conk, uh, use uh, divide and conk uh, uh, method for the problem, and then you try to find uh, which part is 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 not correct. And uh, in that way, you can effectively verify the the whole a execution somehow. Uh, but this this part actually is not trivial at, at, at all. Is is it's very difficult to implement. You're gonna to you need to pre-sign a lot of uh, transactions. It's a bit like a Lightning Network uh, or payment channel. You're going to have uh, uh, very tricky computations, uh, very tricky transaction constructions. And uh, in my personal opinion, it's very hard to, <laughs> to implement. Uh, actually, so far, I don't think this is anything really innovative so far what i talked about it has been the, the technique uh the technique has been used in actually uh other blockchains like zkp zkp you usually use this kind of same trick as well you convert first convert the uh the application into circuits or into some other encoding system and then you can uh you can have some ways to convert them to uh into a uh, with the with the help of a proof language, you can uh, you can turn it into a proof. Uh, but uh, really, the the main innovation here for the BitVM is they managed to find a way find a way to uh, to kind of uh, to to kind of sim simulate states uh, of the application. You cannot do it directly on Bitcoin because Bitcoin's virtual machine is kind of a uh, uh, stateless. Oh, I need to. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good software. I highly recommend. Uh, and so in Bitcoin, the the virtual machine is stateless. It means you you cannot store the price of uh, Bitcoin on blockchain, uh, and then uh, have some other DApps or have some u other UTXO, u UTXOs to, to use it. You cannot do that. But Bit BitVM, they managed to do that. Uh, so here's the, actually the, the core innovation, this, this very simple script. Uh, they call it the uh, bit value commitment for the sake of, uh, uh, to, to make it more friendly for non-technical people, I did not use the, <laughs> the name. It, it technically is called bit bit value commitment, but here I just say that it's a very simple proof of script that enables you to to um, to enables you to store like the bit value on the blockchain uh, in uh, in the transaction, and then you can ask people to prove that they can only provide uh, the they can only provide the same value for that bit in the whole execution of this uh, uh, these apps you want to you want to uh, run on the bitvm uh, the, the here the trick is you can have basically two conditions and uh, those conditions are encoded with uh, with some hash function and then uh, when you want to when 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 someone asks you for a proof uh you have to you have to kind of review the the pre-image of the hash function basically you have to review your secrets uh here the the tricky thing is that you cannot review them uh you cannot review the the two different values if, if the bit value is zero and one you can only review once if you review two values at the same time um then the the bit vm the whole system is going to slash uh, slash some some bitcoin from your transaction uh that's the trick so basically it's a 
is this kind of simple scripts plus some time lock plus some slash uh, slashing mechanism uh, that that's the core the core innovation uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm not sure if I'm clear here uh, so last I want to mention a bit about the the practical challenges the, the first one is the BVM only works for two parties uh, for now between me and the uh, uh, and, and you guys uh, and then uh, I can submit a proof on the blockchain uh, submit uh, my top loot address on the blockchain you can challenge it by asking me to provide the value of the uh, provide the inputs to the circuit or provide the the value of the some of the value of the program basically uh, it's a, in the white paper they say that it's actually possible to to generalize this into uh, into like something more like something like lightning network you can build channels between two parties and then you can you can have a uh, you can have the prover to connect to like a number of verifiers the prover they can generate different proofs but a verifier they can uh, you can only just verify the things you are interested in so they can you kind of use this way to uh, to build a network but I personally I'm not sure if because right now it's still something work in progress I think so I'm not sure if it's doable eventually uh, the second one is the number of circuits can be can be very large then it means uh, for the proof for the proofs the size is going to increase as well uh, in the in the paper they mentioned that they they actually can have a, a lot of optimizations to uh, reduce the the size of circuits for example um, uh, right now what i said is that you can only have the the bit value commitments you can do it just one time for one bit but actually they mentioned that they can do it for 32 bytes because the uh, the the op codes is based on uh, 32 32 uh, 32 bits sorry not 32 not 32 bytes so they, they there could be a lot of optimizations but again i'm not personally i'm not sure how far they could go uh, but one thing you can know is that this definitely is going to be much more uh, expensive than on EVM. Even nowadays on EVM, for, for a lot of uh, applications, the proof is actually quite slow and quite, could be quite expensive. So here on Bitcoin, uh, it's going to be even like the, the optimization, optimization is going to be even challenging, I think. Uh, and the third challenge, in my opinion, is it's kind of it, it's going to be a system very hard to to um, to to implement as we, as we all know that light lightning network actually is not easy to implement it took so many years uh, and this one is even more uh more much more challenging than uh, the lightning network because you're going to you're going to use time locks and then you're going to use this have this uh, interactive proving system in the uh between the 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 participants and those can introduce a lot of uh more complexity um yeah so that's 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 all thank you for the <laughs> listening uh thank you. <laughs> yes please a question. It's not really on BitVM, but it's on um, uh, on Taproot on Taproot script. On one of their slides, you said basically Taproot script enables you to. Uh, I think it was basically reduce a bunch of. Uh, there we go. Merkle tree of simple scripts. So, uh, d first of all, is that only on Lightning, or is that also on the Bitcoin layer, uh, on the base layer? And number two, if I understand you correctly you're you're going to take a lot of how does that work i'm not quite sure what that means you're going to take a, a series of different um op codes reduce them to a merkle root and then the merkle so how do you get that merkle root to open up and execute or 
What does that really mean, Merkle tree of simple scripts? I don't quite understand what, what happens there. Um, <coughs> so let's say that you have, a, you have a coin, and then you have a, let's say that you have a coin that's, or you have a wallet, and you, you, you want to open it with, in, you, you, you can open it in a hundred ways, let's say. And then you want to kind of encode this a hundred ways on the blockchain in, in Bitcoin. Uh, this is not going to be efficient, right? So you need to have some smart way to, to encode this. And Tabri is a way that you can manage to encode this a hundred ways into just a hash with some, some computer science magic. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a, there's a practical example of Merkle tree in, in real life, except for... <laughs> there is already one that you can uh, find. So there is already one if you uh, create a multi-sig with different conditions, like uh, either one key can spend and if this key is lost, another key can spend. For now, this kind of script, it was, you need uh, when spending both ways, you need to publish the entire script. And now there is at least uh, one wallet, my Citadel, that allows okay. you to to spend only, to broadcast only the condition which is being spent. So you already uh, pay cheaper because yeah. you only uh, publish the part of the script which is being executed. But that's so far, as far as I know, the only... Uh -huh demo for now. I, I mean a practical example of Merkle tree in real life. <laughs> because it's, for me it's hard to explain like how you can like compress, uh, compress a lot of things into just a hash, right? This part is hard to explain. Okay, the yeah, perfect. <laughs> Yeah, for me, I, uh, it's a way of reducing a lot of data into one small piece of data, but you can always show. Uh, for me, a Merkle tree is a way of reducing a, ho a whole bunch of data into one only one small piece of data, but you can always show that, that a p I can prove to you always that one of the pieces of data in the Merkle root, I have it, and I don't necessarily have to reveal to you all the p all the data that in the Merkle tree that comes back and forms the Merkle root. So it's a way of condensing all the data down to a Merkle root and proving to you that one single piece of data went into the composition of that Merkle root. But I... Yeah, uh, I think that's a perfect way And it's a question of sub subsequent hashes. I mean, you do the tree and you you have yeah. to... The, the, the hash of one branch and another branch comes to another root and so on and so on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the question is how it helps with this, how it helps to execute that's what i understand from your question yeah 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 i didn't uh, for me okay now i remember basically if you i see your point you're going to take a lot of different conditions like a wallet can open in many different conditions so you're going yeah. to maybe an, uh, elaborate through some mini scripts all the different conditions spending conditions you would need to spend the coins but you don't want to as you say store that on the blockchain so <laughs> let's reduce that to a merkle root yeah uh, and then you slightly you answered my question a little bit. It's like how do you so how do you know which which path in the Merkle tree you're going to take? How do you know which condition you want to express and and be spent? But you basically told me there are no really wallets that do that except for maybe the one from my Citadel from RGB. But uh, I, I, I get the idea of of what that's going to happen and and the expression of this Merkle of the condition that you want to express through this. Is that only you can do that on the base layer and on Lightning or what? I'm that I'm not quite sure of either. Yeah. So to to spend that on like to to how to spend it, you actually to you have to store the data off off, off chain. So when whenever you create the the uh, if you want to create a very complicated tabloid address, I, I'm not even sure it's possible. But just saying that if you want to. If Bitcoin standard allows you to do that, uh, you have to store kind of the rules or the conditions off chain. You have to store it somewhere. And let's, 
let's say if you want to spend it, you are going to use the data you stored to, to check how to spend it. So that's how it's it. Uh, you mentioned that uh, for complex circuits, uh, it will cost uh, more. Where does this cost comes from? Because if you compress everything to a single root hash yeah. and then just uh, executes parts of the circuit, so where, where does this cost come from? Um, I think the cost first is when you pro provide the pass, it's going to be... Uh, the path is going to be longer, right? Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is... Okay. But it's not that uh, disaster because it's, a, it's the path of the tree. Yeah, of, yeah. Path of the tree, for example, if 1 billion... 1 billion, I think it's like 30 layers, probably. So it means, it means you're going to have uh, 60 hashes at least. So I'm not sure Bitcoin, <laughs> what's the limit for Bitcoin? I, I recall that I, uh, in the white paper, they mentioned something like four megabytes. I, I don't know if some, somehow is that's the limit. But anyway, there will be a limit. You cannot have a, right, you cannot have a, like the pass cannot be too long. And the, another issue is uh, when there are like too many circuits in the, in the challenge response, game you have to do it more rounds right yeah. so it means you have to ask the the prover to prove it uh more times so it means and each hmm? round needs to be on chain or uh no i don't think so uh it's not it's not talking here in the paper so i'm not sure but i don't think so once yeah, I don't once you are so. satisfied with it you don't need to uh submit on the blockchain but i think you you need to uh, pre-sign the transactions in advance so that can cause some some implementation troubles and yeah that's the first thing and the second thing they say also in the paper they say that this is the actually the theoretical model uh, the practical implementation is going to be different so I'm not sure what kind of uh, optimizations they they will, would do for this What's the state of BitVM right now? Is it usable? Can we do? S can what can we do with it? I I don't know because I nowadays I'm very busy, so I read the <laughs> white paper mostly. I think uh, someone, some I think the the team, uh, the team is in Zug and they. I think one week or two weeks ago, I think they submit the first the first BitVM transaction on the blockchain. So. I think at least theoretically it's, uh, it's doable right now, but <laughs> I'm not sure how friendly it is. So, so the DEX is not, for, it's not ready for now? <coughs> I, I don't remember if it's for maintenance or it's yeah. testnet even. Yeah. I, I'm not sure about that. Need to check. But for me, I, I mostly focus on the, <laughs> <laughs> the theor theor theoretical side for now. Uh, question, is there a non-interactive version of this uh i i don't think so as if you if you want to have some non-interactive you're gonna to have more advanced cryptographic primitives like uh, the the purring function of the uh elliptic curves that's that's how they do it on evm they basically introduce this kind of purring pairing purring functions and then you can have advanced zkp stuff but for, for Bitcoin, it's, it's not possible. So actually, they, as I say, that they actually found a very smart way to smart way to get around the limits. But this one has a cost. As you see, that if I want to if I if I want to simulate one bit on the uh, on Bitcoin, I need to have this script, and it's actually you know it's very bloated. You you are going to have two hashes just for one bit, right? It's very bloated. I have a question, but it's not related to BitVM. I don't know if... Uh... 
I have a question. It's not related to BitVM. I don't know if any other buddy has any. Yeah. yeah I'll ask it anyway now that I have the microphone. The uh, if you have uh, if uh, Lightning Network develops a lot in the next years and people are going to come on and you know uh, open and close channels much more and there's going to be a lot more volume on the Lightning Network. Do you think we're going to need to make any adjustments in in Bitcoin script to uh, accommodate a much greater volume of people coming on and off the Lightning, opening and closing channels? What and what 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 accommodations would be needed? Um, that's a good question. So I think uh, right now the kind of the consensus is that Bitcoin is not really scalable enough to save like one billion users. Uh, so probably one million, I'm not sure, but one billion, like definitely, is not scalable enough. Uh, if you want to scale Bitcoin to that scale, probably you are going to need to have some other technologies. Uh, Lightning Network is itself is not enough, uh, but that's my personal uh, uh, opinion. Like no matter how, no matter how hard you you try to to improve it. This, uh, this, this routing uh, and the the cost to open channels, I don't think is really uh, good for for massive. Uh, I think. You think that cannot be resolved? That problem. With some, it depends. Like there are two ways. One approach is that you, if you, if you can introduce some compromise of decentralization, like if you introduce some. Uh, some kind of trust elements into the system, then you can get bit security, uh, uh, bit uh, scalability. But I'm not sure the Bitcoin community will be happy about this trade-off. Yeah. Uh, so it's hard to tell. Um, if you want to really scale it purely, uh, purely kind of trustless, I, I think it's really, really too challenging. Uh, so far, we don't see a solution, but maybe someone really smart can find a solution. I'm not sure, <laughs> but at least right now, like uh, in so many years since the you know since the since the implementation of Line Network, uh, we don't see really a practical way to to scale it. But it's, it it scales Bitcoin to some extent. But if you want to use Lightning Network to, stick, to scale it to like 1 billion users, it, it's, it's too challenging. Uh, I'm not sure if I answered it. Um, BitVM used Bitcoin script for his VM2 or it's another language for this? Or a language will come later? <coughs> From, uh, I'm not sure about this. They did not mention in the white paper, but from what I read on the tweets, I think they use use the Cairo language from um, from Starknet. That's that's my impression. Yeah. yeah. Let me show. Can you explain where uh, this limitation of uh, one uh, prover, uh, basically two party uh, protocol, where this limitation comes from? It's because the in in uh, in the in the proof uh, process you have to interact with the other party uh, because the you know the the this, this part, sorry the the challenge response game is a two party game between you and me like you keep asking me questions <laughs> about a fact and I have to answer you otherwise I lose my Bitcoin. So it's a bit like payment channel, like uh, like network. So it can only happen between two parties. Uh, yeah, what? Because they use time locks, so that's why you you need to have this. Uh, you you can only do it between two parties. So basically, like, I give you some. I uh, I ask you to do something. I give you a, like a time limit. If you don't do it, I. I will slash the money from your your uh, your output, your UTXO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just wondering if it could be uh, with more participants. Like, what's the limitation uh, to slash more people? 
uh, basically it's two parties but uh, if you say that uh, for example in the inputs I can have can we have like uh, multiple inputs from multiple people probably is doable probably, probably is doable but that's still kind of limited you can see it like you, you can still treat it like two parties one part is the prover part and another part is the verified part but prover can be probably be a multi sig or could be multiple people. Okay, okay. So in the sense that uh, if the um, uh, the what's the name the other not the prover the challenger uh, if the challenger cheats it also goes to the prover. It can be like a multi sig, but still it all goes like you cannot have multiple provers, right? Um, challengers I'm not sure like probably it's doable because here is uh, uh, in the paper they only discuss the simple the the, the simplest case just between uh, yeah. one pro one proof and one verifier I'm not sure how like is it possible to scale it to multiple people like Latin, a bit like a Latin network you can scale it I think you can kind of scale it with multiple inputs <laughs> But it's going to be more hard to, to, to manage and to implement. So for your question, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. And also, I, in, in general, it's very hard, really hard to answer these kind of questions for this uh, payment channel or time lock stuff. You really have to, have to get your hands very dirty to, to, to have the answer. For example, like I used to get very familiar with this uh, time locks with lightning, lightning network and then like after two years I did not read the paper like for two years and then you asking me again about the details I forgot it uh, it's something very hard to it's, it's, it's not intuitive it's not very intuitive to, to work with so if you don't work with it for a while then you forgot uh, actually I think one month ago or we have to see you have that problem too <laughs> <laughs> I think one month ago, like uh, one lightning, lightning Dave, he was complaining that it's really hard to maintain lightning network, it's very hard to, to, to improve or to, to build lightning network, and he just quit. Uh, yeah, so not just me, Bitcoin Dave's also. <laughs> uh, yes, I have a question about scalability. Yeah. How scalable is it, the, the whole? not at all for now because you can only do it with two people and also it's very uh, inefficient to uh, it's very inefficient to encode this, the, the programs in this way and also it takes um, it takes multiple transactions to do the uh, to, to finish the challenge part to finish the proof proof process so I, I personally think it's still right now in the research phase uh, I'm not sure how long it will take to become practical, but but as I said, as for Bitcoin, you actually don't need to have very complicated uh, D apps, right? So if if for like simple D apps, maybe BVN could do something. Uh, uh, so the, this part I'm, I think is kind of okay, but the, really the 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 main issue is the two party is right now is only a two party game. You, you have to kind of uh, generalize it to multiple people, then you can do some useful stuff. Uh, but that's why it's open problem for them right now. <laughs> so I cannot answer. But I think I think they uh, they are raising a lot of money to to work on that. So it's a good thing because Bitcoin uh, ecosystem, like in the past, they are less friendly than the Eastern the the Eastern ecosystem. But now I think they, they got a lot of money. They may bring a lot of people to work on this and maybe they can make some new progress. So, yeah, it's... Uh, that's what I heard, they are raising money. <laughs> but just the rumors, I'm not sure, it's not confirmed. Thanks a lot. Then we can head to the bar.
谢谢啊。